All right, so when Vicki uh, uh, asked me to uh, consider speaking, uh, well, first let me make a confession. I raised my hand earlier. This is my first time attending uh, hot coffee as well. <laughs> it's not for lack of respect for what the organization does. Uh, John Whitman, when he got hot coffee started, uh, had the conversation on entrepreneurialism, uh, you know, moving throughout the community when it had kind of maybe ebbed a little bit. But uh, my reason for not coming to hot coffee is I'm not a morning person. And 7.45 <laughs> is extremely early. And, but Vicki has more energy than if I have known this early in the morning. So. And so then when she asked me to speak, uh, I was kind of not knowing what I should talk about. Because I've, I am president of Project XYZ, which is our baby that my wife and I started uh, back in 2002 recently become the CEO of BizTech, which is kind of a, 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 a dream of mine, not necessarily to be CEO of BizTech, but be involved in helping startups and entrepreneurs get their business going. So I'm gonna, tr and then they told me I only had like seven minutes to talk about all that stuff. So I'm gonna try to just run fast through uh, what we do at Project XYZ, not trying to sell you on uh, what we do of service wise, but maybe tell you more about our journey uh, as entrepreneurs. And that journey as entrepreneurs is what led us to be involved with uh, BizTech. So with that, um, we founded a company in 2002. Uh, uh, we're headquartered here in Huntsville, economically disadvantaged woman owned business, which is a mouthful that means something to in the government, government space, uh, 8A certified, Top secret facility clearance. Uh, we were a graduate of the MDA Mentor Protege program. Uh, we were a Nun Perry uh, award winner. Uh, we've been on the Inc. 5000 uh, list for the past two years, so hopefully we'll be 2016 as, as well. And we were uh, Small Business of the Year for the Huntsville Chamber. Um, when we start, my wife is Kim, is here in front, is a CEO of uh, uh, Project XYZ. And I tell everybody that when we started, uh, we actually had our business relationship before we became married. So uh, I think we organized uh, Project XYZ in like February or something of 2002, and we got married in December of 2003. So uh, if uh, I guess if she had said no when I asked, we would have still been stuck together <laughs> as uh, business, uh, business partners. <laughs> uh, we. Um, we are fortunate enough to have uh, uh, John Stallworth and Bobby Bradley as uh, Board of Advisors. Uh, John has been a wonderful uh, mentor for me. Uh, he's also my brother-in-law, thanks to uh, 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 working at Madison Research. I tell everybody I have John to thank for my career and my wife, because that's where I met Kim when she came through, uh, through Madison Research. But when I started work at Madison, uh, let me go back a little bit, uh, talk about entrepreneurialism. Uh, the entrepreneurial bug was planted uh, with me uh, when I was about eight years old. Uh, me and my mom had just come from what, like a small strip shopping center uh, that was family owned. Uh, the, the family had a grocery store, they had a fabric center, they had a laundromat, all in this one, one facility. And uh, my mom came from a big family, so I said, well, you know, why don't we have a family business? And, you know, I can only imagine being a young single parent, uh, South, in the deep south in the early 70s you know what would she answer that question you know being minority how would she answer that question and she just said well if you work hard uh, do well in school then maybe you can start that family business one day and so everything that I probably did from that point until now was positioning myself to be able to to have that that family business and like I said was fortunate enough to meet with Kim who had a shared vision and we were able to put our, our company uh, together uh, when I and so when I went to work at Madison Research, you know, John uh, is one of those guys that it was kind of interesting because I never uh, met John during the interview process, and which I thought was kind of kind of strange. But uh, they hired me anyway, and uh, he's always big on what is your five-year plan. So I was uh, very honest with him, and I told him that hey, I want to have my own business one day. You you'd have my own business one day. And I said that he was CEO and president. He had two titles. I would like one of them. And uh, he, I would like to be president. And so he went and told my boss, hey, Larry wants my job. But by doing that and stating it up front, he positioned me within Madison Research to learn the things that I need to do to prepare me to do what I'm doing now. So kind of how we got here. Um, back to Project XYZ, our timeline. 
Uh, some of the things we'll point out, uh, when we got started, we are doing healthcare IT services, primarily what Kim, Kim's background was in while I was at Madison. When I moved over in 2007, we started doing more as traditional government, uh, government contracting and balancing that with the uh, healthcare IT. Uh, you know, uh, we were talking last night at another meeting about, you know, business and business <coughs> partners. So it worked out well that Kim was in commercial, I was in government. But as we started to grow, it was like, well, how many hospital doors do we have to knock on to get, you know, a you know, $100,000 contract when we can go to the government and maybe get a 500000 contract relatively easy? So um, all of our resources have started shifting more toward the government marketplace. And so we're probably more government now than we are commercial. Um, that's been kind of interesting dynamic as, as we've grown. That started in 2008. 2012, um, we started, uh, I guess we made one of the, the best business decisions that we, we ever did. There was a, a warehouse facility that was for sale in El Paso that we had put together when I worked at Madison Research. It, was, uh, it supported a large government operation. Uh, we bought the facility. We were able to convince a bank in Huntsville, Alabama to uh, finance a building in El Paso, Texas that they had never seen, that we had never seen. Uh, at a, what for us was a, uh, a lot of money uh, in 2012. And so when we bought that building, it showed the government that we were sincere in partnering with them and we had skin in the game. Uh, from that point, we got a contract to manage the operations that were actually taking place within the facility. And now we provide full life cycle support for that customer, both in El Paso and here in Huntsville. And that is what, that decision I think is what has spurred our growth from 2012 to, to allow us to do the things that we're doing now in 2016. Uh, we have offices around the country. Uh, some of the customers uh, that we support, the biggest is the United States Army. Uh, uh, within the United States Army is supporting foreign military sales. We have Hawk and Chaparral missile systems, old systems that we sell to our foreign military partners, but they were systems that were put in place before I was born. So uh, there is, is, is very hard to find uh, components and parts and, and those sorts of things. So we do a lot of reverse uh, engineering, obsolescence engineering to support the, uh, the life cycle for that product. I tell uh, those missile systems and I tell everybody, you know, we, we, you know, we have a fear of terrorism here in the United States. You know, some bad things have happened. But the countries that we sell these missile systems to, I mean, this, they live it every day. You know, Egypt, uh, Jordan, uh, Bahrain, uh, UAE. And so when they're relying on us to be able to provide, you know, uh, these parts and support for these older systems, because if those systems are down, I mean, that's a hole in their defense system that could have a, 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 a terrible impact on their country. So we're very proud of what we do to support, uh, to support the United States Army in supporting those customers uh, to keep their defenses uh, solid. Um, our core capabilities, engineering, logistics, information technology, alternative energy, uh, like I said, foreign military sales, supporting those systems, that's a large part of our business. But you know, we like to, to do things that are fun. When we, when we sat down and, and started uh, Project XYZ, we didn't really have a extensive business plan. We didn't have any lofty financial goals. A lot of people said, well, hey, you know, you worked at Madison Research and John grew the company from 85 people to 750 and we sold and you guys trying to do the same thing. Uh, we, weren't, we weren't really doing that. So uh, we want to just work on cool technology with like-minded people. Uh, and so that's what led us to do a lot of different things. So alternative energy is a, is a growing part of our business. We have a um, uh, 35, 30 kilowatt uh, system that we built down in the town of Triana. So if you're going down Zerk Road and get to Triana, look over to the left when you see the town of Triana sign and you'll see our, uh, our solar farm. We have 50 uh, kilowatts on top of the Vistec building and we have 35 kilowatts on top of the United Way building and we have an 80 kilowatt system in the country of Egypt. Um, I'm running out of time, so this is our facility in Texas. Uh, one of the things I think that makes Project XYZ different than a lot of, uh, a lot of companies that are typically in the government contracting arena is that we invest just about everything that we make back into the company. So buying that building, uh, investing in technology that we can support our customers' uh, mission uh, without them having to pay us for it. So a lot of times in government contracting, you know, you go get your government contract, the government gives you money, and then you go out and do stuff. Uh, we try to go out and do stuff ahead of time so we can learn technology and be 
knowledgeable about what it is that we're selling, uh, and then go try to get our contracts. We have 3D printers, uh, SolidWorks. I heard the gentleman back talk about Solid Edge. We know Solid Edge, uh, Solid Edge as well. Um, uh, this is stuff about our solar, uh, our alternative energy, and then finally that brings me to our investment in BizTech, so the BizTech building. So um, we were involved with BizTech early on. Dick Rees, when he was uh, a CEO, we went down and talked to Dick. He provided us some mentoring on, on different things. Uh, got involved with some of the clients there, but then kind of lost contact with what was happening with BizTech. And then for a variety of reasons, you know, BizTech kind of went into a, a decline uh, later on, and uh, primarily after Dick had left. <laughs> so it might be something uh, to add to that. But um, the building was for sale. Uh, we thought it might be a good home for Project XYZ one day. Uh, turns out that BizTech was still there, uh, uh, alive and, and, and kicking. Uh, so we were able to cut a deal with uh, Bob Lovick, who was the then interim CEO of BizTech, to purchase the facility and to, and to structure a deal in such a way that would give BizTech some capital to be able to, to, to figure out what they wanted to be. Um, that led us to um, me joining the board and then eventually to me becoming CEO of, uh, of BizTech. So um, with that, I won't pull up my BizTech slides, but BizTech is, uh, we have about 29 uh, companies uh, that are uh, physically in the, uh, in the building or virtual clients. Uh, in the past, BizTech has been more of a uh, technology focused incubator. Uh, now we're open to just about any type of business. We're not really uh, working with, you know, retail a whole lot, but, you know, we're more broader than what we used to be. We've got uh, companies who are making propulsion systems. We've got uh, guys that are making uh, uh, technology around uh, uh, disinfecting systems for hospitals. We've got people who want to start a hedge fund. We've got people that want to start a distillery. So a broad, a broad base of business. Uh, we have mentoring sessions that take place uh, for our clients. Uh, we're going to be opening those up a little more to the to the public um, as as time goes on. Uh, another good part of, about the Entrepreneurial Center and BizTech is that we have the WBCNA that's part of there. They have their Fast Track program, uh, various other programs to help, uh, help people when they're starting their business. So uh, we can offer full service support uh, through both entities uh, for people who are interested in, in, in starting, uh, starting companies. So uh, with that, I think I'm pretty much out of time. I will end by talking about Innovate Huntsville. Innovate Huntsville is, an, is a, an event that's coming up May 1st through 7th. Uh, it's the first time, I believe, that all the different entities that are supporting entrepreneurialism in Huntsville are coming together to, uh, for a common cause. And this is the first annual, uh, the first one to help it become an annual event. Uh, you can go to innovatehsv.com uh, to get information about what BizTech, WBCNA, Rocket Hatch, Hot Coffee, uh, Hudson Alpha, and everybody else in town are going to do for that event. So. All right. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it.